Dr. Zahi Hawass was once the most famous archaeologist in the world. His passion for Egyptology and his larger-than-life personality made him a household name, and he was frequently seen on television documentaries about ancient Egypt. However, in 2011, everything came crashing down. What happened and what were those events that led to his downfall? Well, there are lots of more questions that need to be answered. So, buckle up and watch the video till the end, as the upcoming revelations will blow your mind. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Was Hawass simply a victim of Egyptian politics, or did he bring his downfall upon himself? The departure of Egypt's flamboyant head of antiquities, Zahi Hawass, followed by the naming of seven different successors to the joint posts he held, has left Egyptology leaders stunned. Hawass, with his dominant personality, was recognized internationally as the undisputed leader of Egypt's antiquities, although he was highly controversial. He headed the Supreme Council of Antiquities from 2002 and was also appointed Minister of Antiquities by Hosni Mubarak on 31 January 2011, just 11 days before the Egyptian president was toppled. Despite his links with the Mubarak regime, Hawass remained a minister in the military government until his resignation on the 5th of March last year. He stepped down for two reasons. He believed that the army had stopped guarding archaeological sites, and he had been accused of illegal activities, of which he was subsequently cleared. Allah al din Shaheen, an archaeologist at Cairo University, was named as Hawass's successor as minister, but his appointment was not confirmed. Then Hawass was reappointed on the 30th of March. On July 17th, Hawass left for a second time after he came under pressure from the transitional government. It proposed that Abdel Fattah al-Banna, a conservator, should succeed him, but the Secretariat of the Supreme Council opposed the appointment. This was followed by a five-month hiatus with no antiquities minister. The Supreme Council of Antiquities effectively took over the leadership, although this situation has not been formalized. The transitional government finally appointed Muhammad Ibrahim Ali, an Egyptologist at Aim Shams University, as Minister of Antiquities on the 7th of December. He remains in the post. Beneath the minister, the other key post is Secretary General of the Supreme Council. Hawass retained this position when he became minister in January 2011, but after his first resignation, it passed to a council official, Sabri Abdel Aziz. After returning as minister, Hawass named Mohammed Abdel Maksud, a museum specialist, as the head of the Supreme Council in early June. Hawass fell from power the following month. On August 18th, Mohammed Abdel Fattah, another museum specialist, was appointed as Secretary General. He remained in post for just one month, until the 20th of September. Nine days later, he was replaced by Mustafa Amin, who still holds the position. There have also been changes at the country's leading museum. Tarak El Awadi replaced Wafa El Sadiq as the director of Egyptian Museum in central Cairo in January 2011, just a few days before the political turmoil that led to the looting of the museum on the 29th of January. 54 objects were stolen, only half of which so far have been recovered. El Awadi is now leaving, and his successor is yet to be named. Last month, Hawass said that it would not be fair for him to comment on his successors. He is busy publishing my excavation reports and lecturing, and is also finishing a book on antiquities and the 2011 revolution. Chris Naunton, the director of the London-based Egypt Exploration Society, says that European Egyptologists have maintained links with their colleagues, working via officials in Cairo. Instability in the Egyptian archaeological leadership is having a damaging impact, however, particularly as income from tourism has plummeted. Problems don't end here. Another controversial event that haunts Hawass to date is his assistance to Germans who came to do something unexpected. Zahi Hawass, the world's most recognized modern Egyptologist, has been called for interrogation over allegations that he assisted three German amateurs in stealing rock samples from within Egypt's tallest pyramid. Hawass dismisses the allegations, claiming that there is nothing against me. In April 2013, three Germans, two amateur archaeologists and a filmmaking companion went into the inner sanctuary of Giza's Great Pyramid, the last of the ancient world's seven marvels. The three, conspiracy theorists Dominique Gorlitz, Stefan Erdmann, and Peter Hofer, aimed to prove that the pyramid was not, as has been long assumed, the last burial place of Pharaoh Khufu, but rather a vestige of an even earlier civilization. In order to provide evidence of this, they removed a piece of the cartouche, which is the emblem that identifies for whom the pyramid was created, and transported it to Germany so that it could be examined there. 
The samples were returned after widespread indignation, and the men were also prosecuted in absent along with five Egyptian officials who were suspected of facilitating them in illegally entering the pyramid. The trial took place after widespread outcry. After a trial in which five officials alleged that Hawass, a controversial former antiquities minister, had assisted the theft of the samples while filming a documentary on the cartouche in 2010, all eight were found guilty on Tuesday. The trial was the culmination of the allegations made by the officials. Following the verdicts handed down on Tuesday, the court decided to question Hawass about his involvement in the case. Hawass claims that he left the government in the middle of 2011, which is two years before the crime was committed. He thus denies any role in the incident. He admits that, in his capacity as Minister of Antiquities, he gave his approval to the documentary that was released in 2010, but he asserts that no one touched the cartouches and no one even put their hands near them when it was being filmed. Hawass yelled aggressively over the phone, I was not in authority in 2013, saying that the year was 2013. In April of 2013, someone committed this theft. There is no allegation or accusation leveled against me. To be sure that what took place in 2010 was within the law, all I have to do is check with the district attorney. Regardless of the outcome of his interrogation, this is the latest setback in a once promising career that has ground to a halt ever since Hawass was forced out of his position as the Minister of Antiquities in Egypt following the uprising in 2011. Hawass's career has been in a holding pattern ever since. In the 2000s, the flamboyant Hawass gained a reputation as Egypt's version of Indiana Jones after participating in a number of films on Egyptology as well as hosting his own reality program. After being recognized as one of the world's 100 most important people by Time Magazine in 2006, he subsequently placed his name on a range of khaki trousers under his own brand name. Hawass was tainted by association after the deposition of the tyrant Hosni Mubarak, and while he remained in office for a few months after Mubarak's ouster, he eventually resigned under a cloud of unfounded corruption charges. In an interview that he gave to The Guardian the previous year, Hawass dropped hints about a future comeback and said that he was the only one qualified for the position. When asked about his leadership talents, Hawass described them as a gift from God. After some time had passed, he made the following observation. When I talk, People listen. When others speak, they sleep. I don't see why people are being so critical of me on this. I painted the idea of Egypt in the minds of people all over the globe. In the past, only people from other countries would do it. I went to England, and when I was there, a lady passed out in the elevator because she was so shocked to see me. It was hard for her to realize that I was going to be staying at her hotel. What actions should I take? This brings us to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Also, click on the notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video.